Today we will deploy the MERN project we developed in the previous video. For the people unfamiliar with the project, we developed a simple CRUD application which is based on MERN and it looks just like this. There are a lot of options when it comes to free hosting and most of the platforms are incredibly generous. Here we have a few options for a web server built with Node.js and our client built with React. The free tiers are designed to help you get started and once your project grows, you can always upgrade. Note that some platforms do not allow commercial use on their free tier. In order to publish our project on render.com, you will need to have a GitHub account and it's totally free. You can go to github.com and sign up from here using your email address. Follow the instructions and then you'll be good to go. I've already got an account, so I'm going to close this. And the second thing that I want to mention here is that I'm going to be using the GitHub desktop application just because it simplifies the process of creating repositories and pushing changes. It's just a nice development workflow. You can get the GitHub desktop for Windows, Mac OS. I'm pretty confident that it's also available for Linux as well. And that's it. I'm already logged in in my GitHub account and I'm here under repositories. If you wish to use the command line, you can do. You can create a repository from here as well. But as I said, I'm going to be using the GitHub desktop application. So let's open the GitHub desktop application from here. And we need to start by creating a new repository. An easy way would be to add an existing repository from your hard drive. Or I've already got my folder here with the client and the server. And we are going to start with the server first of all. And I'm just going to drag the server folder inside here. This is going to notice that this is not a Git repository. Would you like to create a repository? And all we need to do is click here, give it a name. I'm going to call my project book dash server. Of course, give it a nice project name. Then if you wish to, you can give it a description. Initialize this repository with the readme file. And for the git ignore, this is important. We need to select node. And this is purely because we don't want to be uploading all the node files on GitHub. There are quite a lot of files and you don't need them. For the license, choose the one that suits you. I'm going to go with MIT license and then click create repository. That's it. We can close this. And now inside here on the left side, we have our first repository called server. And we can actually change the name by publishing this repository. So I'm going to click publish repository and from here we can give it another name so book dash server give it a description if you wish and i'm going to keep my code private just to show you that you can have your repository private so nobody else can see it i'm going to click publish repository and this should take a second okay our project is published on github and if i go to my github account here and if i refresh and if I look for book, you will see that we have book server updated now, which means that everything has gone well. Now let's jump to render.com. And if we click on prices super quickly, you will see that this is free for hobbies, students and indie hackers. And this is going to work just fine for us. So sign up for render.com. And once you're done, just go to your dashboard. From here, click on new and then select web service. Click on this. And this is going to ask us to connect a repository from GitHub if you sign up with GitHub. Otherwise, you will need to connect your GitHub account from here. Just follow the instructions. And then because this is a private repository, it's not going to show up in here. And we need to configure our account by clicking configure account here. If we scroll down a little bit, from here, we can select only the repositories that we want render to see. And I can select the repository, look for book, server, and click on it. So this is going to be added to the list and I can save it. We're going to get redirected back here. And as you can see, now we have the book server project available and I can connect it. From here, we need to give our service a name. I'm going to give it a book server. Choose your region from here. I'm going to leave as default. The branch can be left as the default one. Runtime is fine. Yep, everything else is fine. The command node index is fine. We've already said that. From here, you can choose the free tier, scroll down and click create web service. All right, while this is creating, it's going to take a few seconds. 
we can go to the environment variables. This is where we can add or MongoDB connection string. For example, if I click add environment variables, we have the key and the value. So if I go to my project and if I click on server here, we have all.env file we created in the previous tutorial and we essentially have MongoDB URI, which I can copy. We need to replicate this basically, put it inside here. And for the value, we can just grab the MongoDB and the rest from here and paste the value in here and just save changes. And if you click on event, the important bit here is that you will be able to see whether your project failed. So as you can see, it says deployed failed for this number here. And I don't really know what this means, but if I click on deploy logs here, you will see, let's have a look super quickly. So the error is mongoose 7.3.4. The engine node is incompatible with this module. Expected version bigger than bigger or equals than 14.20.1. So let's fix this. I'm gonna open my server project and all we need is the package.json file here. And here, maybe just above the development dependencies, we need to add this code, which is gonna tell render to run node with this 14.20.1. Save this, go back GitHub desktop and now publish the changes. So I can do engine, for example, and then commit to main and then publish. And if you go back to render, this should automatically start deploying. So if I go to events one more time, you will see that automatically it started deploying because you noticed that there is a new commit. And now all we need to do is wait a couple of seconds and see how it goes. But if you get an error, make sure that you see the deploy logs and normally you can Google it and find the answer pretty quickly. All right, awesome. As you can see, deploy live for and the number here engine. And by the looks of it, if we get the green cloud, it means that our project is working. Here is our URL, which is given to us by render.com. And this is gonna be unique and it won't change. So if I click on this, hopefully we should be able to see our API working and we're getting hello mate. And then it was API slash books. If I press enter, you will be able to see that we are getting the books and our API is working, which means that our first mission is complete. Okay, now that we have the server running, we can copy this URL and we can super quickly look into our React application. So here where we have client, let's open this in Visual Studio Code super quickly. So code dot, and I wanna show you a couple of things. The first thing that I want to show you is that if you go to route and let's say books, for example, so we've been using our local development server, which is localhost of 80,000, but now we can use this one here. And of course, if you wish to, you can add a custom domain name as well, but let's keep it simple for now. And I'm going to copy this. Now, the problem here that I'm having is that we have localhost on a couple of files. If you scroll down, we probably have it a couple of times here as well and we're repeating ourselves and it's pretty hard to update. So what we can do is create another EMV file inside here, inside our client. And this is going to be called .env.local. And inside here, since we're using vit, we need to put vit like so underscore and then the name of our variable, which is going to be server URL. And this is going to be equals the URL. So for example, if you're developing locally, you can put this as your local host. It's going to be like this of 80,000 and that's it. Save this. And now I'm going to show you how we can use this in our application. So we don't have to repeat ourselves. And let's say, let's start with books. For example, inside here, if we put the base URL in single slanted quotes, like so, and if we use remove all of this, and if we use the dollar sign and curly bracket, we can bring the variable name, the vit variable name from here by doing, by doing import dot meta dot env dot vit underscore server URL. And that's it. Now we could potentially also create a server URL here. So const server URL purely because 
we cannot use this everywhere, the base URL, because it has the slash API slash books. So I'm going to grab this. So I'm going to grab this and paste it in here. So now potentially I can grab this and replace pretty much everything that we need. For example, I can replace this here by replacing this part without the uploads, of course. So dollar sign, curly brackets and server URL. That's pretty much it. Save them. Let's go back to create book and do exactly the same. So I'm going to copy this here, paste it around here, and let's see what we need to replace. So we can definitely replace this one here. I can do it with single slanted quotes and just replace the website like so. Also, let's see whether we have it anywhere else. I think we're good to go here. So let's go to the next one. I'm going to copy this one more time. Edit book. Save it here. And in fact, I can just put it inside here. Like so. That would also work. I should have done that maybe. And now I can go down. Change this to single slanted quotes. Swap this. So this was purely bad planning from my end, uh, but there are not too many. So we just need to replace a few and replace this. And for the images here, we also need to replace this. And I think that's going to be it. Single book. Okay. Maybe we need to do that as well. So I'm going to. Copy this here. Let's put it in here. Change this. Save it. Change this. Save it. And that's it. So now everything is pretty much the same. Our application is going to look for this env.local file and it's going to go to localhost. So essentially, when we publish our project now in render, we can change this URL to our new server URL. Let's do that. Okay, from here, we need to create another repository for our client. So I'm going to drag and drop this in here. And this is going to say add local repository, create a repository, give it a name, book-client, initialize this repository with readme, git ignore needs to be node, and license i'm going to go for mit and click create repository close this and now we should have our client repository in here as well and we can push the repository i'm going to call it book dash client keep the code private and publish repository and we have our repository published so we have our client and the server to go back to render.com click on dashboard from here we can click on new static site because react.js is a static website and then from here we need to configure our new repository so we can add it because it's a private repository scroll down click on select repositories look for book client select it and save now we can create our new static site by selecting the book client connect it give it a name book dash client the branch is going to be main everything else stays the same except the distribution folder so every time we build our project our project will be built in this distribution folder which i can demonstrate so let's click create static site and i'm going to demonstrate this as while this is creating so this is going to take a couple of seconds and if i go to the client here and if i open it in visual studio code sorry if i open it in terminal let's say and if i do npm run build you will see that this is going to create a distribution folder inside here and this is our website fully built i'm going to minimize this and the other thing that we need to do is we need to go to environment variables here and we need to mimic the env here the env local so this one here let's grab the vid server url add environment variable paste it here and let's paste the value when we work locally that can stay the way it is but when we publish our project we also we want to be using our server url so i'm going to go back to the dashboard here on another tab 
I'm going to go to book server and copy the URL from here. Copy this and paste the value inside here and save changes. If we go back to event, this should take a couple of seconds and hopefully we'll have the website running. Okay, it took a good minute, but as you can see, we're getting the green cloud in here, which means that we can now visit our website on this URL. And as you can see, our website is working. If I go on books, you should be able to get the books. Everything else should be working. If I click on the filters, they should be working. And where do we add a book? Let's add a new book. So I'm going to do test, test, five, test, test. Let's choose an image of the cat and submit. As you can see, data submitted successfully. If I go back to books, you should be able to see that we get the test here. And if I click on it, it comes up with all the data and so on. That's pretty much it. And that's pretty much it. And the last thing that I wanted to talk to you about is that if you go back to render.com and if you click on settings from here, you can deploy a custom domain name. If I find it, here we go. If you scroll down, you'll be able to see custom domain names and you can just click on that custom domain name, add your domain name, and this will give you the DNS instructions. Unfortunately, I don't have a domain name that I can use. It's totally free. I believe that you can publish around 25 domain names for free. I found a super cheap domain name that I can buy and use for this tutorial. So I'm going to buy this super quickly and then I'll show you how we can connect our domain name on render.com. Awesome. I've got the domain name and now I'm going to log into render and see whether we can connect it. Okay. I've got my domain name ready and from here I'm going to click DNS. Obviously, depending on what platform you use, it's going to look a little bit different, but the settings will be more or less the same. At the moment, I just got alias and CNAME here. So let's go to the render dashboard and let's start with the book client. I'm going to click on this, click on settings, and then at the bottom, I believe we have custom domain name. From here, click add custom domain and let's type our domain name. Ruddy.low and save. From here, we can either add a name or alias record pointing to this. So I'm going to copy it. But as you can see, if your domain name does not support a name or alias, you can just point an A record to this IP. And to do this, you can just click on a record and then do the settings. All right from here, I'm going to remove those two records. So we start in blank and I'm going to copy this here and add it as alias. We can leave this blank and then I'm going to paste it here into the answer and add. As you can see, the record has been added in here. And now let's have a look at the next step for www.low at CNAME record for www pointing to this. Okay. We're going to create a new record CNAME. This is going to be www and then the answer will be the same as before and add. We have both of the domain names here. Let's go back and verify. Okay, from here, my domain name has been verified, which is great, but I'm getting a certificate error. I've Googled this and it looks like I just need to wait a little bit and this error will fix itself. So I'm not going to do anything else. Wait a little bit and then come back. Okay, I didn't do anything but refresh the page and we are now at certificate pending. So it is about just waiting a little bit and then hopefully the certificates will work. Okay, this took a while. I think I waited around four or five minutes. And now after a refresh, you can see that we're getting certificate issued, which means that our custom domain name is set. As you can see, rally.low. Let's open in the browser. And it doesn't seem to be working yet. So I might wait a little bit longer. Okay, I waited a little bit longer. And now if I refresh, as you can see, the website is now working, which is great. And now I can do the same for the backend. Let's go back to render.com dashboard and then go to book server. From here, scroll down, click on settings and scroll down to the custom domain name settings. From here, I'm going to add custom domain name and let's do server.ruddy.low and then save. So I need to create a CNAME record for server pointing to this URL. So I'm going to copy this URL, go back to my domain name register, 
and then from here I'm going to click on C name. The host will be server and then the answer will be the URL that they gave me and I'm going to click add. Okay, here we have all the records and now if I go back to render here and verify this, it broke the page so I'm going to refresh, scroll down and here we are, as you can see the server.ruddy.low is verified and I believe that this is going to take again a couple of minutes and it's just going to work. While this is happening, you can potentially copy this. You can go to your React application here where you have environment and potentially you can have your fetch URL as this URL here, of course, with HTTPS and this will just look more professional. And once they create the SSL for you, it's all going to work. And that's pretty much it. I'm not going to wait for this one because I'm pretty confident that it's just going to work, but it will take some time maybe five to ten minutes.